Look at Magnata is one of the most cyberstalked and harassed people ever on the internet. For over a decade, crazed fanatics and obsessed stalkers have followed his every move and harassed him and impersonated him. It's pathetic these lonely imbeciles spend their life absorbed with Magnata and his life. This podcast will discuss the actions of these wastes of oxygen and expose their stalking and framing of Luca Magnata. Yes, folks, Luca Magnata has been impersonated by losers with no lives on the internet. People create social media accounts and pose as Luca. This has been going on for over 15 years. Luca Magnata never had any online internet accounts. Luca very rarely used the internet, and absolutely zero evidence exists linking Luca to any internet accounts. It's all fake news. It's defamation and slander. Nobody can prove who is operating an internet account or social media post unless they're witness posting it firsthand. Nobody ever seen Luca posting on social media accounts firsthand, obviously. So it's just baseless, reckless speculation. In fact, no IP address has ever been traced back to Magnata, and no evidence was ever recovered on his discarded laptop. Furthermore, to this day, even after his arrest, the same social media accounts are continuing to post. The media were force-fed scripts. Stories invented by crazed stalkers who operate a Facebook group and pose as animal activists. These con artists open social media accounts and post messages, impersonating Magnata. Then they compile spreadsheet folders and write up sustained scripts they mass send to the media. The imbeciles in the press that eat up the sensational gossip. It's all fake news scripts designed to harass and slander Magnata. Luca Magnata has absolutely zero connection to any of these stalkers posing as animal activists. These stalkers need Luca in order to use him to gain attention and money for themselves. Yes, everyone, these obsessed stalkers have even done interviews, documentaries, and even appeared inside Netflix films. Fat, hideously ugly, morbidly obese losers in life who are completely obsessed with a very handsome Luca Magnata. These obese stalkers are now begging their Facebook subscribers for money. Don't fall for their cons or their frauds. I wonder if the IRS tax know about the cash these fat stalkers are collecting from doing interviews and films and money grabs for their Facebook group. They can claim they believe Luca was responsible for animal cruelty videos a decade ago, and that's why they're cyber-stalking Magnata. But still, after Luca's arrest years later, they continue stalking and obsessing over him. It's not animal activism, it's obsession. It's all about money. Luca was never involved in any animal cruelty videos. That was all fake news invented by these lonely, fat losers. Zero evidence exists. Luca was never questioned, charged, or convicted of any animal cruelty. It's all lies and fake news. In fact, Luca could file a lawsuit and sue Netflix if anyone else is making these claims, and he could win big for defamation, slander, and harassment. But I doubt he would waste his time. Two twin women in California calling themselves the Barbie twins falsely claim they helped patch Luca. It's all fake news. Because for years, the police completely ignored these animal activists and their baseless claims. The police ignored the animal activists because there was zero evidence, and the police realized these losers were framing Magnata. It's all ups and staying complaints and claims made by the severely unstable, obese people who drool over a male model. Also, the media claimed a certain social media account by the name Beavis Butthead was operated by Magnata. The media was red-faced and embarrassed because a specific account was posting after Luca's arrest and while Luca was being arrested, and also while Luca was exiting the airplane. The media and their so-called experts failed miserably. The same account Beavis Butthead, if you do your research, is now posting as Nico Tyneman and Nambura Hodad, all operated by a man in Florida. He continues claiming he will fly to Canada, hire a lawyer, and release Luca Magnata. But miraculously, something always comes up and there is an excuse. His dad died, his brother's dying, his grandfather's dying. Tired of all these irrelevant losers using Magnata to gain attention and money. When asked, Luca Magnata has absolutely no idea who this person is or has ever communicated with.
Nico Tartman. Here is an idea. Get a life and stop obsessing over Luca. He will never be your friend. He will never be in a relationship with you. He will never marry you. You have no right to know anything about him. His life is none of your business. It's clear you people are misfits and losers and try to live through Magnata. But you will never reach his level, ever. You will die irrelevant nobodies. Luca despises media and he will never speak to any member of the press. Don't believe the media's fake news narrative where they falsely claim Luca enjoys his attention. He does not. It's all fake news. Luca despises all these losers, fat people, and especially these women, since they are mostly meddling, unstable, nosy, and possessive nuts, like his repulsive mother who he hates more than anyone on earth. Luca has learned never to get involved with people who have no friends. They have no friends for a reason. These sad, pathetic internet stalkers feel important, causing trouble and doing mischief online. It's the only way they feel alive. They have no lives in the real world. Luca, on the other hand, always had countless friends throughout his life. He was never lonely. He was always very popular. He had a lot of friends, including Nader Eid, who was one of his best friends turned lover. Luca was engaged to marry Ron Mikhailov, and always was surrounded by the Russian community. Luca's entire friend base was Russians and Italians. Luca also was in high demand, with ten escorting clients each night. Each night, Luca was at a dozen expensive luxury hotels. Luca was one of the most expensive and popular male escorts. He traveled all over to 40 different countries and was really well off financially. Some of Luca Magnata's and managers and agents and ex-friends are also very jealous of Luca. They believe he doesn't know how to face the hypo how hypocritical they are. Luca is well aware of how these people from his past smile to his face and backstab him. They justify their horrible actions by labeling Luca evil and claiming he deserves all of this. Tell yourselves whatever you need to tell yourself to sleep better at night. Luca is too good to speak with any of you low life scumbags. So now let's discuss these hideously ugly, useless transsexuals and she-males who relentlessly try and link themselves to Magnata. Luca has never, and I repeat never, dated or was in any relationship with any of these lying scumbag retards who invent stories and Photoshop pics to get attention. These she-males are attention seekers who are for sale. Luca is not connected to them in any way. These failures in the media have nobody to interview who are actually connected to Magnata, so they pay these irrelevant liars. Joe Warmington of the Toronto Sun is one of the most dishonest reporters I've ever seen. His sensationalized stories and interviews of irrelevant losers, and they never does appropriate research. Joe met Luca in 2007 for 10 minutes, and they never spoke again. Luca doesn't even remember his name, yet Joe is the one who stalks Magnata and speaks about him relentlessly. Big, hypocritical fame horror. So all you stalkers really need to get a life. I've done extensive research about this case, and there are still countless unanswered questions. We really need an accurate documentary film done on this case. Netflix fucked up big time. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Comment, like, and share, and give feedback. The truth is important.